we're here at Marquee at the Star for the global launch of Assembly Wednesdays. We're interviewing a very interesting character tonight who's been a very busy boy this year. So everybody, let's go. Our special guest tonight has been very busy this year. He's headlined some of Australia's top festivals, including Splendour in the Grass, Stereo Sonic, Groove in the Moo. He's also toured with Digitalism, played at the Sydney Mardi Gras, and has his very own global House of Benny parties. But we've stolen him away for just a few minutes to get to know him a little bit better. Benny, thank you so much for joining us here. You have a single with Sneaky Sound System called Friends. Tell us what it was like working with the duo. I just remixed it. Oh, really? Yeah. I have before. I've like I've, I've worked with Connie separately. I've worked with Angus separately. But this was just a remix. So I got the parts and I did it. And yeah, but they're very close friends of mine. So, and you've worked like with a number of artists around the world, and that's a huge compliment to know that so many people want to work with you. Yeah. But we want to know who the most interesting person is to work with. <laughs> Myself. <laughs> <laughs> when it's just me and me. Um, I don't know, it's, it's a hard thing. I mean, working with Eddie and DeCressi in Paris was amazing. Like, he, you know, he produced the Air album, Phoenix. His studio is incredible. He's like a 40-year-old, like, French electro kind of legend. That was an amazing experience. But then again, there's a certain people like Prince Terence, who I worked with, who's a vocalist, and he's doing, like, all the vocals on my next album. He's just, like, such a character that I'd almost say him. He's just, like, he lives in another world. I, um, I saw your set at Grooving the Moo and I absolutely loved it. I thought it was amazing and it was edgy. Um, I know some people, you know, have different views about it. What, what I want to know about um, the Brotherhood, so, you know, you use them in your live performances. What, what sparked that? It was just like I have a huge obsession with, like, with the voguing scene, in the ballroom scene in New York. And it just kind of was, was inspiration from Paris is Burning, basically. And I was trying to find some dancers and... Just going through people, speaking to friends and speaking to people in New York that knew people here and vice versa. I found this one guy, Corey, who's a choreographer. And so it was two guys, Corey and Eli. And I found Corey and he got Eli. We did some rehearsals. And actually, I found them like via email when I was in New York and they were here. I flew back and we did like one week of rehearsals and that was it. And those guys are amazing. Really awesome, really edgy, really, really cool. Yeah, I see. You mean like other people's opinions about the dancers more so than. Ah, I see. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, especially at a, like a regional festival like that, it doesn't, you know... It's not mainstream. Yeah, I mean, initially, I remember the first show, it was like people throwing bottles and booing, and it's like, they're gay, and it's like, what? It's like, what do you, what do, you do for that? You're yeah, like, we're, we're here to play. I threw a water bottle on stage, and then Corey got up and grabbed his leg and did this, his splits, and then kicked <laughs> the water bottle into the stage, and everyone's like, ah. So, well, you've built, like, an amazing career DJing now. Yes. Tell us, is this everything you expected? From, from when you were young and starting out? Um, I don't know, I just always did, did what I did. I don't know if I really expected so much, you know? It's like, it's for fun and it's, yeah. I don't know, everything's a surprise. Nothing's ever what you really expect, you know? I was gonna say, how did you, how did you get into it? How, what was your start? It was like the first time I saw the Avalanches play live and Dexter was DJing with them. And when I saw that, I was just like blown away and it was amazing. So the next day, I, me and my brother bought some turntables and a mixer and then like I was just like a dorky kid. So I was just sit at home and just DJ all day and not go to school. And then basically, you know, escalated from there. Yeah. And well, now I'm not a dork anymore. <laughs> I've heard your music likened to a tree in the way that each song is like a branch stretching out to another genre, yeah. is how I've heard it. Tell us, are there any genres that you haven't yet done, like yet followed up? I, I, man, there's so many genres that, yeah, you know. Anything you're hoping to do? Like anything that you, you want to try but you don't know yet what to do about it? I mean, I would love to produce rap. That's what I really would want to do, but you know. Are there any specific artists in that genre that you'd want to work with? Yeah, plenty. Like I'm doing, I'm actually doing some stuff with Childish Gambino at the moment, which is a good kind of start. Okay. Um, but you know, like, oh, I'd love to work with Drake. I'd love to work with ASAP Rocky. Um, you know, a lot of dead people. <laughs> <laughs> Biggie. You know, but um, yeah, there's plenty. But that's like that's the long term plan. And you've been travelling the world, I know, and I'm sure you've had some amazing experiences. Is there any in particular that really excite you, that stand out? Um, I spent like the first five months this year in America, and I was based in LA. Touring around a lot, like the Winter Music Conference was fun. Um, I don't know, I think it's just more so this, the people I've, I've met. 
doing it, you know, and living in LA for a while was a really good experience and working in different studios and with different people. Well, Trent and I love playing games with all our artists and we want to play a game with you. We call it Roots with Benny. This game, how it works, we've chosen four highlights of your career. We're going to say them to you and we want, in the smallest amount of sentences possible, you to explain the roots or the origins of that story. Not a roots, okay. <laughs> That's exactly what we were going for. Yeah, I thought so, okay. So the first one we have, I think, is it Sean Delir? Yes. Tell us a little bit about her, him. <laughs> oh, okay, a character. But anyway, so I was in LA, I was at a friend's birthday party and I was um, with my other friend and we are talking about going to the studio the next day and we were talking about getting a vocalist and then this guy walks up with a wig and with heels on and he's like, hi, I'm, I'm Sean. And I was like, do you sing? He's like, yes. So the next day we got him in the studio and he rocks up in this like big Chevy, like beaten to the fuck. And he just comes in the studio and sings and just starts speaking. And so actually all the majority of the verses we use is just him like laughing and talking and speaking in between him singing. Our second um, one is Riots in Belgium. You know, I had a good time. I was working with Joel Dixon. We, you know, the music went really big and that was fun. We got to tour Europe and America a few times and then we both kind of just wanted to do different things, I think. What is our next one? New York. New York. Yeah my favourite city in the world. Can you tell us any specific stories about New York? Like what keeps you going back apart from the buzz of the city? What's what's the thing you go back there's, for? Oh man, there's everything. I don't know if it's the fact that it's, that every time I'm there is just that perfect amount of time and I'm always working and always have good experiences. Got a great network there. Everything's just easy and available and it's like, you know, you know they say it's the city that never sleeps? It does sleep, but to a certain extent, you know, you can go have an amazing dinner at four in the morning. You can do whatever you want you know there's different areas and like when I was like recording my album there I was in like in Queens and I was down in Brooklyn I was in Harlem I was in Manhattan there's different studios everywhere and just everywhere is different and it's a very welcoming city you know everyone says it's really hard to like you know crack it but you know I think anything's hard but if you know the right people then you can do anything. Our final one is House of Benny. Well the House of Benny the name kind of came from the same thing with like the whole Bogan scene they have the houses and I guess the house was like everyone, because that album was I had a lot of collaborators, so it was, I guess, my house with my collaborators and they were the people in the house and, you know, and we did what we did. Well, there you go, guys. You just got rooted with Benny. <laughs> Gonna get a cigarette after that one. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you guys. Thank you so much, Benny, for chilling with us today. Guys, don't forget to check out his SoundCloud, listen to Benny, and his album, House of Benny. House of Benny is an amazing party where musical minds meet and create magic. Now this is a house party you definitely want an invite to.